Hey everyone, Wei Jun all over here today. Today we're, we'll be presenting building br bridges for blockchains as the main topic for the Reimagine 2020 virtual summit. And a shout out to CryptoCoin Trader, Mousebelt, and Block2V for putting this together. I've had a great partnership with Mousebelt. It goes back, well, it goes way, way back. And about six months ago, we officially created the Alliance, the University Alliance, um, hosted by Mousebelt. And we look forward to participating in more events and doing workshops, sponsoring courses, and a bunch of other things with, with Mousebelt and partners. So I'm gonna, we're gonna do a bit of an introduction now of um, the presenters. So I'll let Weija go first and then I'll introduce myself. Hi, hello, this is Weija. I'm VP of Engineering of OneChain and also a uh, adjunct faculty of University of Texas, uh, McComb School of Business. And it's great to be here to give a presentation about uh, building bridges for blockchain. Great, thank you, Weija. And I'm Oliver, I head up communications and growth at OneChain, just mostly community and marketing and to some respect also business development. Been with OneChain um, almost three years and look forward to, to doing this presentation. I'll let Weija now explain the topics that we'll be covering today. Yeah, today we are going to cover the four topics. First one is that uh, Oliver is going to give a demonstration of uh, cross-chain applications. This is, will be uh, uh, the kind of production demonstration. And then we are going to go through several sections. The first section is uh, cross-chain interoperability use cases. And then we're going to do the one-chain milestone. Uh, we implemented uh, some uh, cross-chain capabilities to connect uh, one-chain with uh, Ethereum, with uh, Bitcoin, with EOS. We're going to mention some of the these milestones we have. And then we're going to do uh, an introduction of a uh, cross-chain interoperability uh, technology. And then we're going to do a uh, one-chain uh, technology presentation, both for public blockchain and uh, private blockchain. Hey, thank you, Weijia. As you mentioned, I'm going to be walking through the Light Wallet and showing different components, as well as doing a crushing transaction. If you open the Wallet tab, these are the different assets on OneChain. And if you open the Crush Chain tab, you'll see Bitcoin, Ether, and EOS, the different integrations that we've established so far. Hardware Wallet tab, our Delegation tab for Proof of Stake, our DApp Store, so far, one dollar box, but we'll be adding more dApps such as the WR Dex in the near future, actually within a week or so. And for demonstration purposes, I'm going to be doing a crushing transaction, converting Ether to wrapped Ether on one chain. So currently our balance on Ethereum testnet is 10 Ether. We're going to convert 5 ETH to 5 wrapped ETH on one chain. So as you can see, there are different components here. You have the storming group. Right now there's only one, but in the future as we decentralize, you'll be able to choose different storming groups and each will have their own fee, be different speeds, faster, slower. Now, this is the account that you'll be sending the ether to, your one chain address. In this, account, in this case, it's account one and we're going to be converting five ether to five wrapped ETH. Here you confirm the crushing transaction, you click send, and then at the bottom, you'll be seeing sending lock request and then lock request sent. So what it's doing is it's locking the native ether on the Ethereum chain, and then it's deploying the proxy ETH on the one chain blockchain. So you'll be able to use this proxy ether on one chain for DeFi dApps, for gambling, for anything really that's um, in the public sphere. And once you're done with that and you want to redeem it for the native Ether, you are able to do so at any point. And this, it's the same process, just the other way around. So now you see the balance has been updated here, 4.99 before we had 10. And soon enough, we'll, be, we'll see 15.449 ETH, W ETH, sorry as the final balance in our one chain address. So now it has changed to, the status has changed to locked. 
here storm and locked status update redemption request sent and as you can see the new balance has now is now reflected 15.449 ETH. So we've successfully just converted native ETH to WETH by locking the native ETH on the Ethereum blockchain and deploying a proxy token on one chain, uh, which is representing that Ether that's locked. This goes the same for Bitcoin, for EOS, and the other integrations that we establish. Hope that you found this interesting. There's, there's some better or more in-depth videos done by team members such as Noah on our YouTube channel, so make sure to visit it. And yeah, I'll pass it on to Weija to talk about section one. Thank you. This section is about core chain interoperability use cases. We will describe some use cases for core chain interoperability. There are three, in today's presentation, we'll mainly describe three use cases. Uh, here in the middle of this diagram is Alice, who is a blockchain user. And there are three uses cases here. One is Kata, the uh, core chain asset transfer application. This is a use case where Alice try to sell crypto assets to multiple blockchains. And then on the bottom left is CDEX. Quachain decentralized exchange. And this is a use case where Alice will kind of exchange asset with owners in different blockchains. And then on the bottom right is a use case where Alice want to transform assets to another blockchain in another format. So she didn't make the ownership, but just change the format of the asset onto another blockchain. Yeah. Next slide, yeah. Good, and this is a case for uh, CDEX. CDEX stands for uh, Cochain Decentralized Exchange. Alice has some Ether in Ethereum blockchain and wants to exchange to BTC in Bitcoin blockchain. Today, we have to rely on centralized exchanges that connect to two blockchains and then help Alice to trade one asset from one blockchain to another asset, another blockchain. But there's an issue here because the centralized exchange has to detain Alice's private keys and hold the asset for Alice. But if something goes wrong with this exchange, Alice will lose her asset in that exchange center. So in this use case, Alice just want to maintain her private keys, but use, use a cross-chain wallet to send a cross-chain exchange order. She specified the target currency in another blockchain and the desired exchange rate and the address to receive the Bitcoin. Suppose the, the target uh, uh, currency is BTC in Bitcoin blockchain. And another user, Bob, has some Bitcoin and would like to exchange it for Ether. Bob sees Alice's sell order and accepts the sell price. The Ether specified in Alice's sales order will is then transferred to Bob's address. And the corresponding amount of Bob's Bitcoin is then transferred to Alice's address. Can, can we go to the next slide? That's good. And this shows the flow. And then if there's any error, the exchange operation is atomic. If there's any error, then the operation will be canceled and reverted. And there are several situations to consider in this use case. For example, Alice or Bob may exchange the asset in part or in whole. They can also specify the expiration date for the exchange order. So with this cross-chain capability, Atlas and Bob can exchange assets in different blockchains without the dependency on centralized exchanges. So this is one use case, which is called a cross-chain decentralized exchange. I'm going to turn to Oliver for the next use case. Perfect. Thank you, Weija. 
So I'm going to talk about Kada, which is the cross-chain asset trading application. And this platform is really there to allow users to sell either fungible or non-fungible crypto assets on any blockchain. So an example is where Alice has a crypto kitty on Ethereum and wants to sell this through a cross-chain marketplace, um, something that's currently not there, but something that we envision to be on one chain. So it'll be like OpenSea, except with cross-chain assets. So let's look at Bob. So Bob can have an account anywhere on any blockchain. He can have an account on EOS and Charlie can have an account on one chain who can then make these transfers with each other. And about Kada is the multi-chain support. It's allowing the original blockchain, in this case, blockchain A, to speak, communicate, interact with blockchain B. And Kada also needs access to an Oracle for this crypto exchange rate information. So that's, that's really important. Like, for example, how do you take the price of a crypto kitty on Ethereum or the Genesis kitty or the ones that go thereafter? Well, they're currently being traded on their respective marketplaces, like I mentioned, OpenSea or Token Trove in the case of Gods Unchained. And then here, this is where the Oracle can then pull the information. Now, if we go to the next slide, you will see the flowchart here and wondering maybe how, how to place a sell order. Well, in this case, as you can see, Alice needs to connect to Kada with a wallet. In this case, it would be a, a one-chain wallet. And you need to determine a number of things. You need to know, for example, the price, the currency, and what crypto asset is it going to be? Is it going to be in wrapped Bitcoin, in wrapped Ether, in WAN, or any other cryptocurrency that's been integrated? This has to be defined. And then you, the user also has to choose where the receiving address where they want the payment to go to basically and then if this crypto asset is supported so in our case with wbdc then yes it would be supported and this would then allow the order to be added to the marketplace or to yeah to to the marketplace or the order book now bob sees the sell order and he decides to purchase his crypto kitty with a Bitcoin account. So an account is then also created on Ethereum with Kada, and this atomic transaction occurs between Ethereum and Bitcoin. The tra tra when the transaction is complete, the cryptocurrency is sent over, in, in this case Bitcoin, and the unlocking of the crypto kitty then occurs as well. So Bob receives that. Now we'll talk about the CDAT. And this is the cross-chain asset, asset transform. And it's really to allow assets on one blockchain to be transformed to another format, either on the same blockchain or in a different blockchain. So an example of it being on the, on the same blockchain is when you're wrapping one. And in what cases do you need to wrap one? Well, just like in the same cases as Ether, when you have to wrap Ether for the decentralized exchange because you cannot trade Ether in its current format, you need to convert it to an ERC-20 format to be able to, to then trade it with other ERC-20s. And in this case, you would have to do the same with WAN in order to trade WAN with other WRC-20s. So that's one case where it's on the same blockchain. And on another blockchain is when you're, for example, wrapping Bitcoin on one chain. So you're locking the Bitcoin on the respective Bitcoin chain, and then you're creating a proxy token on one chain, which is an original receipt of what's being locked. So if you lock one Bitcoin, you get one proxy Bitcoin on one chain. And that, that never changes. It's always whatever is locked on the respective chain is always the same as whatever is locked, is whatever is created as a, as a proxy token on one chain. Now, if, if you look at the, the flow chart here, um, it shows how you need to, in the case of an Ether asset, you submit the transfer, the command of Ether to a target token. And in this case, we use Beth, an example. And then 
we uh, the CDT checks if Beth is supported. If yes, the CDT is locked and the ETH is then um, in blockchain A. Then the CDM creates Beth token for Alice in blockchain B. And for asset redeeming, for example, let's say you've swapped over 10 ETH and now you have 10 Beth, but you want to redeem those 10 Beth for 10 ETH. In this case, you would be able to, to do that. Um, so you receive the original asset without any problems. Yeah. And I'll wait and we'll talk about the similarities and differences between the three. Yeah, thank you, Oliver. Um, Keta, CDEC, and also CDAT are three different decentralized cross chain applications with some similarities and differences as shown in this diagram. All three apps rely on cross chain capability and decentralization. Keta and CDEX involve value exchange and do not involve cryptocurrency format changes. It's just the ownership changes. The main difference between Keta and CDEX is that CDEX only support value exchange at this time, while Keta can support both value and asset ownership transfer. And CDEX, the one that does the asset transform, does not involve owner change. So basically you are the same owner, you just change the, the asset type and change the hosting blockchain. So that just uh, change one chain format to another one so that it, the asset can be used in different blockchains. Assets transfer through CDAT maintain their value and do not need to access external exchange rates, which means that they don't need to have an oracle. So in this section, we describe three use cases in detail in the area of uh, cross-chain decentralized finance. And there are many other use cases. For example, they could be cross-chain supply chain, and there could be cross-chain donations, charities. So they are divided the topic into four sections. In last section, we mentioned about cross-chain interoperability use cases. And this is section two. We're going to talk about one-chain milestones and some of the background. Go ahead. Yeah. Right. Perfect. Thank you, Weijia. So I'm going to be talking a little bit now um, about our about OneChain's ecosystem, uh, what we've what we've been doing in the past few years, what we've been focusing on, and what we will be focusing on going forward as well. So we've really been focusing on the interoperability on the back end, since this is our competitive advantage. This is what we do best. So this is something that we wanted to focus on, also on the standards. And that's also why the dApps were coming after and are coming now, um, starting with the first cross-chain DEX. What we really want to do is to have this explosion of decentralized finance on one chain. And let me, let me speak a bit about the cross-chain DEX, just so you can better understand the power of cross-chain and why it's important. So our cross-chain DEX will allow all of the RC20 integrations that we've established, future ones as well, obviously, Ether, Bitcoin, EOS, and then of course also all of the EOS DAP or ecosystem projects, their respective tokens, EOS tokens, will also be on this exchange. Now, if you look at Ethereum, you can trade all of these ERC20s, obviously, in Ether, but you can't trade Bitcoin. The only Bitcoin option you have on Ethereum currently is the WBDC that's a centralized version. It's an IOU in the end. So you have to trust the central custodian. In this case, it's BitGo, but you have to trust that they have the Bitcoin. And it's a manual process. You can redeem the Bitcoin, this IOU for the original Bitcoin, like you can on one chain. So I wouldn't really say that Ethereum has Bitcoin. In a sense, it does, but it's not the decentralized or that vision really that we want to go for. Because in the end, it's it's just a centralized IOU. Some other things that we we want to focus on going forward, aside from the DEX, is also adding fe more features to it, like margin trading and lending and borrowing. 
and also having tokenized commodities, stable coins, tokenized shares. That's also why we have, we're collaborating with projects like Finexus and Rivix. We're building some of these decentralized financial platforms on top of OneChain, leveraging our interoperability. Now, it's also important to note that aside from this, we also have some pretty important partnerships with big, part, with big enterprise. In Spain, we're collaborating with one of the biggest companies um, and also one of the biggest companies in the world, which is Telefonica and Telecommunications. And then in Malaysia, we're working with our partner PUC, and they will also be the first enterprise partner that will release the T bridge or the interoperability between a private their private chain and one chain's public chain. We're also currently and something that the developers will be focused on focusing on is on improvements to the cross chain, on the speed, the transaction cost, our privacy. Um, components of our protocol layer, and then adding these different elements to improving our dApps and tools. We also have a proof of stake, which we didn't before August of 2019. So now we have a whole community of validators, of delegators, and we're also working towards the Storm and Node decentralization, something I will cover in the later slides. And yeah, now we will talk a bit about how one chain is implementing the different cross chain. Yeah, thank you, Oliver. Um, for cross chain, uh, uh, for flat blockchain to enable decentralized transfer of value and assets. So you can do everything on one chain already for value or asset transfer and data transfer. And then we develop a cross chain transaction between one chain blockchains an external blockchain like Ethereum blockchain, Bitcoin blockchain, EOS blockchain. These are all being implemented and in production release already. And then we are in the process of building generic blockchain and interoperability capability for heterogeneous blockchains. And this could be connecting public blockchain with private blockchain, private 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 consortiums, everything that uh, we envision right now for blockchain capabilities. Now I will talk a bit about our milestones. Starting with January 2018, this was when we released our mainnet and we announced this at BTC Miami. Then in July, this was our first major milestone, at least the major, major technical milestone, because we released our interoperability with Ethereum, something that's very important because back in 2016 was when the devs started looking into we're researching into how we could create this interoperability, right? And creating this universal solution to connecting private, public chains, consortia chains, all of them together. So this Ethereum interoperability is, is very important because it proved that we can integrate with blockchains of similar characteristics, one chain being a Bitcoin fork, I'm sorry, being a, a, an Ethereum fork, thus demonstrated this. Now what was, obviously a lot more important was when we released our Bitcoin interoperability in December of 2018, uh, shortly after our Ethereum milestone. And this was even more important because it demonstrated, it proved more than anything that our interoperability works across any blockchain, regardless of the cryptographic hash function of the, of the, consensus on it, so in this case, Bitcoin's proof of work, and of all the other features, it proved that we can, our technology works across any blockchain. Now, in Q1 of, 2008, of 2019, we also started releasing more ERC-20 integrations, and in Q3, uh, specifically in August, we released our, of 2019, we released our proof of stake, which we branded as, as Galaxy. And this has opened it up to our community of validators and delegators, and something that we didn't have before. And it's based on Ouroboros, on the Cardano's Ouroboros. Took inspiration from that and created our own version, added our own improvements. Then in Q1 of 2020, so recently, we 
released our T-Bridge framework. And this is something we'll cover in, I believe, section three of these presentations. We'll go into more detail of how we have created this framework that allows you to connect your private chain to our public chain and also to some of the other public chains that we've integrated with, like Ethereum, Bitcoin, EOS. And then now, um, actually this was yesterday, well, a few days ago, two days ago, I'm sorry, last week, we released our EOS interoperability. And this is another milestone that not only proves, again, that our interoperability works across any blockchain, but it also isn't limited to just value. So we had to incorporate complex data iterations like CPU and RAM, some of these features that obviously you can't or you don't see on Bitcoin or on Ethereum. So it proves that we can't, we aren't just limiting ourselves to value. We're obviously also extending to data and interpreting other forms of um, assets. Now, Wager will talk about the, the one chain nodes and application topology. Thank you, Oliver. Uh Um, one chain is now POS based uh, proof of stake. Anyone anywhere can join uh, uh, one chain to be validators and they can run the node anywhere they want. And here we have a uh, node running in uh, Asia, in America, in Europe, everywhere. And also, if you don't want to run the node, you can also become a de delegator. You can delegate the asset to a node and then you just help them run the uh, validators. And from there, well, we can build different applications. Uh, you can build Explorer based on Jiwen, which is uh, the client node for one chain. And we also build a desktop wallet, a mobile wallet and web wallet based on the client node. And also the iWen, which is an API uh, gateway for uh, one chain traffic. And also uh, WebMask, which is a browser based uh, uh, kind of uh, interaction uh, between user and the blockchain. And also we uh, help and also uh, encourage developers to develop uh, cross-chain applications. And these could be based on a uh, store man mechanism and when mask and I went uh, different mechanisms. And we encourage developers to uh, kind of starting using uh, one-chain SDK to build the uh, cross-chain applications to do the asset transfer across multiple, multiple uh, blockchains. And then we can also support smart contract on one chain. So one chain has become a kind of platform uh, that support uh, uh, cross chain transactions uh, to Bitcoin, to Ethereum, and also the EOS. And we're building a more general capabilities to bridge the public blockchain with pri private blockchain as well. Uh, back to you, Oliver. Thank you, Wei Now Now we'll talk about one chain's roadmap and some of the things that you can look forward to going forward. So in Q1, we have yet to release a number of new ERC-20 integrations. And now that we've integrated with EOS, also means that we need to create the different EOS DAP tokens and integrations. So this is something that you can look forward to in, in this quarter of this year. Then the next quarter, this is when we're gonna have a, a really big announcement because we'll release the new blockchain integration announcement. So, at, well, not only the announcement, the announcement will be before, but we'll release the actual integration. And more on that later. In Q2 as well of, of 2020, we'll have the Open Storming Crush Chain initiative, starting with phase one. So what we'll do here is we'll open up, starting with three nodes for the first week or two. And then we'll open up six more and we'll have nine EOS Stormman nodes that will be running this initiative for us before opening it up to Bitcoin, Ethereum and opening up more EOS nodes. This is very important because it's our first step towards our interoperability or Stormman solution decentralization. Then we'll also have the DAP integration framework, which if you look at Trust Wallet, it's creating a bridge between your browser and the different DAPs. So 
will be able to have this browser that you can then search for any DAP on one chain. You can, um, it'll be easy for you to access, access it through the mobile, through uh, one mask and some of our other wallets. Then in Q3 of 2020, we'll have the phase two of our open storm and cross chain initiative. Here we'll open up more nodes to the, to the community. And we'll also look into either Bitcoin or Ethereum as the next one after EOS. And following that, we'll have several other phases um, until we're fully decentralized the storm and node architecture and um, validation. Then in Q3 of 2020, we'll have several different one chain developer community initiatives with the challenges, hackathons, workshops, events. We'll also be collaborating more with our university alliance partners and more instances of dApps and tools on one chain. So you can look forward to that then in Q4 of 2020. So towards the end of the year, um, we'll have different cross chain standards with private, public, and consortia chains, and something that we just really focus on now at the Enterprise Ethereum Alliance as well. As you know, he's the official representative for them in China, and um, he he will release more information um, in this quarter as well of what they've been working on. So we're really excited for that. Now you must be wondering what ways that you can contribute to one chain well there's several different ways um one is the ambassador program which we announced a few months back and now we have over we had over 100 applications and now we have over 80 in our telegram group and over 15 core ambassadors core ambassadors are the promoted ambassadors the ones that have demonstrated extra value that have gone above and beyond and have been collaborating closely with us. And there are several perks to being a core ambassador. And it's not just limited to articles or to content creation. We have someone doing graphics, um, wallet tutorials. We also have developers who be who's, have joined this ambassador program and we are gonna continue to build that out um, with different components and bounties. Yeah, and, and the next way to uh, contribute is through a uh, developer community. We have a very good uh, developer community uh, which developed a couple of uh, a good projects for one chain. For example, my Wang wallet was developed by uh, developer community and also the Wang mask and also the hardware support of uh, Wang wallet. And there are a couple more coming up. And this the, the website for the developer community is uh, wangdevs.org. You can join uh, WENDEVS.org and I think this is the time, the best time for you to join because with more and more SDKs coming up with more emphasis on cross chain, uh, this is the, the moment for you to contribute uh, with the code and some of the uh, project initiatives that are supported by one chain through a developer community. Great, yeah. and. Um... So add to that as well, we, we are looking if you're a project, enterprise, consortium, or and you want to partner with us, you want to work with us on, on several different things, like um, our current partners now, PUC, Telefonica, and Enterprise, and EEA, Hyperledger, Consortia, um, and the different interoperability standards that we're looking into. If you're interested in getting involved there, and either in the technical business or a combination of both, then please reach out to us. You'll find the information at the end of the, the presentation as well. Yeah, and also uh, one chain value, the contribution from uh, user community. So we ask a user to test our software, to test our wallet, test our apps, and also test our uh, client nodes. And if you are interested, you can also join different alpha tests and beta test programs. We actually provide bounties for that. And that process has been going on over two years. So it has been a very good process and you can contact Oliver for that. I think there's, there's some form of process for that that you can find in the website of onechain.org. Uh, exactly, yeah. And recently now we, we were closing the EOS testing. We've had a a lot of good feedback from the community of testers. And then the, the last thing you can contribute as a platform user. So if you're a trader and you wanna 
you're interested in trading these different crushing assets, we're going to have different gamified um, features as well, um, competitions and so forth. Well, that if, if you want to get involved there or um, with creating new dApps as well, um, or tools, like in the case of Peter from Chainlayer, who he had worked with us um, for a while. He, he started with the Trezor integration and then he started working on several different tools um, as well for, for one chain. So anything counts. We really look forward to onboarding more users. If you're less technical, that's fine as well. Um, we can support you in any way that you see fit. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Now we are going to present to you cross chain interoperability technology with different vendors, different organizations implementing different technology for cross chain interoperability. So, so in today's presentation, we'll cover several things from the Oracle external connection to Ripple's interledger protocol, how it differs from one chain, the different blockchain relays, like you're familiar with BTC, BTC relay, the different side, side chain technologies, Polkadot, Cosmos, and then Weijo will end it off with discussing one chain's interoperability and how it's different from the others. Thank you, Oliver. Uh, first uh, one is uh, Oracle external connection. We know that uh, blockchains do not talk to each other and blockchain do not talk to the real world uh, directly. So we need to use Oracle to connect a blockchain with a legacy IT system. So Oracle external connection for cross-chain is a technology that can be used for cross-chain operations. For blockchain community, Oracle is a technology that can be used to bridge blockchains with an external IT system for data, events, message, and operation transfer. So an Oracle is also normally referred as a connection between on-chain and off-chain systems. So in this diagram, we can see that uh, the Bitcoin blockchain on the uh, bottom right can be connected through an Oracle to a legacy IT system. And then the Ethereum blockchain can be connected through an Oracle to the same IT system. And then the IT system can do the processing for uh, data and asset and message from the two blockchains. And as you can see, this system is not elegant because it needs to rely on this legacy system. So this is not a recommended solution for cross-chain interoperability and operations. Thank you, Weijia. Now I'll talk a bit about Ripple's interledger protocol. So it's a bit similar to one chain interoperability. Um, it's also an open source suite of, of different protocols and it's really, um, the, the main objective behind it is for connecting different wallets and payment networks together. And a few tests have been done in regards to the interledger protocol on a, on a practical level um, through public networks, private networks, and also traditional payment channel with the centralized ledger. You've also had a few things built with it, um, a subscription service, micropayments, and also this XRP tipping bot where users can send XRP, the, the native, Coin or token to different users on Twitter. But the only problem or one of the main issues here is that there, there hasn't been that much testing on it either. So we'll, we'll wait to see when, when they come out as well. Yeah, thank you, Oliver. And then the third case is the BTC relay. I think in section one, we mentioned about a use case called KEDA, which is a cross-chain uh, uh, asset applica transfer application. Um, basically, a user want to play a game in Ethereum, but he or she want to pay it with Bitcoin. And BTC Relay basically is a technology that allow a user 
to pay Bitcoin and then play a game in Ethereum blockchain. So what it does is that uh, there are relayers that connect the uh, Bitcoin blockchain with Ethereum blockchain. And then the relayer will constantly submit headers in the Bitcoin blockchain to Ethereum smart contract. So the Ethereum smart contracts have a record of a lot of headers in Bitcoin blockchain. So when you have a dApp, it's a decentralized application, user can pay with Bitcoin and then send the verification request uh, through a BTC relayer and through the smart contract on the Ethereum blockchain. And then the once the verification is verified, the BTC relayer that actually submit that header from the Bitcoin blockchain will be rewarded with a small fee. So this is a method that actually allow Bitcoin in Bitcoin blockchain to be paid and then used on the Ethereum blockchain. So as we can see, this is pretty good, but it's very limited. It only allow the payment to be done on Bitcoin blockchain and then uh, pay to the Ethereum blockchain. It cannot be kind of make it very generic to work on different kind of blockchains. And this is very kind of specific use of uh, uh, KEDA as we mentioned in the earlier use case uh, presentation. Next one, please. Yeah, and then the, the next one is uh, the core chain through uh, sidechain technology. And this is a case where uh, there's a main blockchain and then a side blockchain, a secondary blockchain is, is created and connected to the main blockchain with a two-way pack, which means that uh, both blockchain have some asset and then the asset has a correlation so that the asset can be uh, transferred from one blockchain to another blockchain. And this is the uh, almost the CDAT case where you transform the asset from one form in one blockchain to another form in another blockchain. And then the technology that is used for this one and the mechanism used for this one is the atomic swap. Basically, it's a time lock and secret share method. In this, in this uh, diagram, a user in main blockchain can lock the asset with a secret key. And then the user will send that transaction with the hash of that secret key to the other blockchain. And the other blockchain cannot redeem the, the lock asset because they do not have the secret key for that one. And then the, on the secondary blockchain, the equivalent, equivalent amount of asset will be kind of a created and affiliated with the user who locked their asset. And to get the asset on the secondary blockchain, the user need to use this, this, the secret key. Once the user use the secret key on the secondary blockchain, the smart contract on the secondary blockchain can use that secret key to redeem the asset on the first blockchain that were originally locked. So in this way, if the secret key is wrong, or if the user kind of, a, if there's an error in unlocking the asset on either of the blockchain, the whole transaction will be canceled. So this, this, uh, this is an achievement of atomic swap through time lock and secret hash. So this is very good for a sidechain technology where you have two blockchains together and then you have the two-way pegging of the asset for the two blockchains. Next, next, please. Yeah. And then, of course, we also know there's a Polkadot technology, which is uh, very, very extensive for Quachain. And they have different scenarios. They have a, a kind of a parachain for Polkadot ecosystem. And then they have bridges to connect Polkadot system with external blockchains, uh, uh, such as uh, Bitcoin blockchain, and then the Ethereum blockchain. Uh, we think that the um, Polkadot is so extensive, it is a competitor of Ethereum blockchain. And we have not seen kind of a, a very implemented uh, 
case for that yet. So we are watching for this technology because, it, because it's so expensive. Uh, we view uh, Pocto as a competitor of uh, Ethereum blockchain. And I think whether Pocto will be successful or not depends on, well, on whether Pocto ecosystem can compete with Ethereum ecosystem and be successful in that or not. And we are still investigating how the relation and the bridges and the parallel chain system work together and they are evolving. And for example, they use, uh, they use a different consensus and they use different EVM and we are watching on that as well. This is something we're paying attention to and we will update it when there are more progress on the Pocket side. Thank you, Wei Zhang. And then um, as well, similar to Polkadot, in, in the case of Cosmos, you, you have the Cosmos Hub, which is essentially a shared ledger that allows tokens to be transferred between different chains or different peg zones, as you can see in the image there on the right. The only thing is that there are certain requirements, like in the case of finality, that need to be met if you're connecting this zone or this peg zone to the, the Cosmos Hub. And this, the Cosmos Hub token, also known as Adam, is really only intended for staking, for governance. So there are some questions around what the utility will be going forward. Initially, Cosmos had also discussed having two tokens, one being Adam, used for governance, for staking and such, and the other for transaction fees. In the end, they decided just to go for one token, but it will be interesting to see how that evolves. And also this protocol to connect the different um, blockchains together, as Wei was saying about Polkadot, we're still waiting for, for more information, um, more um, tests uh, where it's been put in practice, basically. So there are many projects that are built on Tendermint on the underlying protocol, and that are, um, but they're not all connected. Most of them aren't connected to the Cosmos hub. So there's not any utility for Adam there. And um, it's also important to remember that Tendermint does not equal Cosmos and, and the Cosmos ecosystem. Yeah, thank you, Oliver. And this is a, a kind of an overview and architecture of one chance core chain technology and mission. This is in our uh, white paper, yellow paper. It has been around for two years. And our vision is that uh, we want to use uh, one chain technology to connect uh, public blockchains as well as private blockchains. So on the bottom of this diagram is a collection of private blockchains. And then we use a one chain protocol to connect these uh, private blockchains while you're with one chain. And then on the top are public blockchains. And we want to connect these with one chain as well. And going beyond that, we also want to build the direct bridges to connect public blockchains together and also build bridges to connect uh, private blockchains together. So at this time, as we mentioned earlier in one chain milestone presentation, we have connected uh, Ethereum blockchain with one chain. We will have connected the uh, Bitcoin blockchain with one chain and also EOS blockchain with one chain. And also we have implemented a connection for then chains as well. And we are in the process of uh, kind of making this uh, generic and universal so that we can have a standard, a standard protocol and specification to connect blockchains together. So we are kind of looking for the next presentation about using one chain technology to bridge private, 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 public, and public, public blockchains and the, the, the roadmap for one chain uh, for the next uh, next uh, steps. Yeah, well, thank you, Oliver. And this is the uh, section three. And for section four, we're going to have more details on one chance protocol and one chance uh, technology, including one chance work in uh, asset transfer, asset core chain uh, transformation, and and T bridge, and also uh, one chance work in standardization and working and working with different organizations in our blockchain community to achieve interoperability for public and private blockchains. Perfect. Thank you, Weijia. And this is one chain uh, question uh, interoperability. Yeah, 
for one chain, what well, we in last section we mentioned about the uh, different vendors, different organizations, uh, cross chain technology. Uh, for for one chain, it's quite unique. Uh, uh, one chain has uh, its own uh, blockchain, uh, which is uh, a POS based. It's proof of stake based, and these do the validations for one chain blockchains. And then we also have uh, cross chain nodes that uh, bridge uh, one chain uh, blockchain with other blockchains, such as Ethereum blockchain, Bitcoin blockchain, EOS blockchain, and some private blockchains. And one of the advantages we have is the integration of uh, POS nodes and the Stallman nodes. So basically, we have a consensus for one chain blockchain and Stallman mechanism combined together. So we we are probably the first integrated uh, core chain platform that can have our own proof of stake uh, consensus and also have our decentralized uh, core chain mechanism. And this is the overview of our kind of a uh, core chain component. On the left hand side are devices. We, at this time, one chain wallet actually support or uh, one chain uh, client devices actually support uh, mobile device, web application, uh, like my Wayne wallet, uh, web, uh, then we have uh, iOS device, the Apple device, and also we have uh, Android device uh, as wallet. We also have a desktop app that uh, actually is a light wallet that support the VIP44 uh, wallet uh, format. And then we connect uh, uh, these uh, devices through either direct connection or through a cross-chain API gateway to connect uh, to our blockchain. And on the bottom right here is uh, a blockchain cross-chain hub, and this could be one chain hub that serve as the uh, coordination hub or as a, a kind of router hub for cross-chain operations. And then we have blockchain one, two, three, these are external blockchains. And these external blockchains can be connected to our one chain cross chain hub and then do the cross chain operation transactions through a one chain hub. They can also connect together uh, directly. So we have uh, some of the connection here and these are kind of a direct connection between uh, blockchains themselves. We support both uh, hub based uh, cross chain as well as uh, direct uh, bridge uh, cross chain in the future. Yeah, and this one is a kind of simplified uh, view of two blockchains connecting together. You have a blockchain A on the left hand side and you have blockchain B on the right hand side. And then you have a kind of connect the bridge, uh, bridges that connect uh, the two blockchains. And we can support multiple bridges to have uh, decentralization and these bridges can form a blockchain, a private blockchain themselves. Yeah, and this is a kind of cross-section view of the bridge, right? You have a, uh, you have cross-chain bridge, and then you have a, a cross-chain uh, bridge uh, consensus, and these uh, bridges can form a, a, a pri private chain by itself, and then they can store data and have a common consensus among bridges themselves. So this provides decentralization for cross chains, and this is already done in the cross chain interoperability yet, and we are trying to achieve this one very soon. Thank you, Weijia. So we released our T bridge in um, the end of January of this year, and the T bridge or Trust bridge is a universal or a generalized framework that for data and asset transfer between heterogeneous public and private chains and it's really for allowing devs to connect their private chain apps uh, to the different public chains that we've integrated one chain bitcoin ethereum eos and the upcoming ones as well and it's also it's also released to increase the number of integrations that we do going forward and um, the T-Bridge has modular components that are um, that allow any chain to be integrated, regardless of its technicalities. And the design is also compatible with our Sturman crushing mechanism, 
which is really leveraged, as you know, to connect to the different public chains. And you can start seeing a lot of different use cases with this T-Bridge. I mean, one example is the loyalty points. So you could have a company or various companies in a network that set up these loyalty points on a private chain and then connect to a public chain to do the, the trading or the swapping. So users could technically have a um, loyalty points from a gym, hotel, airplane, and exchange those with one another and the partner network. So that's one. Then you also have another use. You have many use cases. Another one, for example, is the hashing of mortgages onto the public chain and then keeping the private information about the purchaser or about the seller off on a, on a private chain. So all of those records are kept safely um, away from the, obviously the, the public network where you can see everything, where everything's visible. There are certain things that you wouldn't want to be on a, on a public chain. Also a supply chain for tracking items um, where you want to upload public information such as where a product was manufactured, where the product ended up going before reaching its final destination, the customer. So you can kind of create a story around that and track it through the, the different stages. And then um, with um, one chain has three core pillars, three technological pillars. One is the smart contracts. So as a fork of Ethereum, um, it's EVM compatible. So it means any tools, any dApps can easily be ported over to one chain, um, except we've, we've got a better transactions per second than Ethereum. And we also have our, our proof of stake now as of August. The second pillar is privacy. And something we haven't talked about a lot, but it's also important to remember that we've incorporated Monero's ring signatures and one-time one -time addresses into our protocol, to our core protocol. So users have an option to send private transactions or to send public transactions. And then, of course, our interoperability, which Weijia has just explained in more depth, so I'm not going to go into too much detail there. But... This, um, what really makes us different to all the other chains is the incorporation of our secure multi-party computation, the distribution of a private key, so that if there's no single vector or um, opportunity for a single vector attack. And this is obviously really important because when we've been looking at some of the other interoperability technologies, they haven't really taken this into account and they haven't solved that issue. So we are still relying on a central party. That's a problem. And that's something that we've been working towards changing and we've achieved that as well. Now we're also starting to decentralize fully all of these crushing nodes. Yeah, thank you, Oliver. I think uh, the mission of one chain is to kind of have a industrial uh, standardized uh, cross-chain technology uh, implemented, adopted by uh, blockchain community. And we have done a lot of work on this uh, already. And most of you are familiar with this diagram. And we have uh, connected with Ethereum, with blockchain, with EOS, and we also connected to uh, Nanchain. And going forward, uh, we are trying to make this uh, standardized and universal. So we are working with uh, EEA Enterprise Ethereum Alliance to work on the uh, cross-chain interoperability. We are serving as a member of the uh, a CITF, a cross-chain interoperability task force to, to move this forward, to tackle this uh, challenging problem. And at this time, with the uh, task force, we have identified over 12 use cases already. And we are kind of uh, break down the architecture for cross-chain into different components. And work, we are working on different components uh, uh, collectively to make it universal and make it standardized so that they can be put into a, a specification so that when we cross different blockchains, once we follow the standards, the effort will be minimized. And some of these components include, uh, uh, include uh, uh, cross-chain, uh, just a moment, let me give a little bit more detail on that. Yeah, like, uh, for example, in the application layer, we can have a, a cross-chain dApp, we can have a, a cross-chain smart contract, we can also have multi-chain smart contract tools. As, as most of you know, 
uh, today when we deploy smart contract, we deploy to one blockchain. But with cross chain, we need to deploy a smart contract to multiple blockchains. We need to have specifications for that as how we can do things like that. And also for tooling, we need to have a, uh, the cross chain tools and have a, a multi chain uh, deployment tool as well. And then for the enterprise level, we need to have a privacy zone so that different organizations can, can have their own privacy zone in the cross chain uh, operation. And then for uh, finality, in one blockchain, you can wait for five seconds or you can wait for 20, 20 minutes for a transaction to be completed. But for cross chain, that doesn't work anymore because you need to wait for the other blockchain to be finished to operate on the on, on this blockchain on the source blockchain so they are dependencies of finality so we need to specify manage the finality for cross chain operations and then we also need to have zone permission there are a lot of compact issues that we need to resolve and specified as standards and also we need to have partition storage and also uh, cross chain trust and cross chain automatic transaction and one more thing we also need to have cross-chain identification, because without identified blockchain, there's nothing you can do with cross-chain operations. And these are the challenging tasks that we think are kind of the whole industry, blockchain industry need to tackle, the need to kind of uh, view these as, as important problems so that the whole blockchain industry can talk, tackle these challenging problems. So we ask our kind of uh, blockchain vendors and colleagues to work together uh, together to tackle the coaching and the ability uh, challenging problems with, with us. Perfect. Thank you, Weijia. And if you want to learn more about OneChain, you want to follow us, please join our social channels. You can join one of them or all of them. We post our news across all of them. So you'll be, you'll be covered regardless. Um, I also want to stress, as Weijia was saying as well, that it's also it's very important for everyone to understand that it's still really early. There are thousands of blockchains and they all have the same problem. They're all isolated. They're unable to connect, communicate with each other. And while many of them are competing with Ethereum, with other blockchains, we're focusing really on the interoperability. That's our core focus and our competitive advantage over other projects. So we'll continue to, to do this, to bridge the different communities, um, not just on the technical, but also engaging with the different communities, doing things together, um, dApps, hackathons, workshops, a dev community, ambassadors, events, conferences. There, there's so many things that we have yet to do. So we look forward to doing a lot more, and getting a lot more exposure for Wenching in this new year, and also releasing these, these first um, dApps in the DeFi space. So keep an eye out for us, because you will be hearing a lot about us. And join our channels. Thank you. Thank you all.